Olga Tokare published her mystery book titled Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead in the year 2009. She was the recipient of the Nobel Prize in Literature for 2018. The narrative is set in a secluded community in southern Poland's Table Mountains, close to the Czech Republic's border. The time period covers about one year, going from one winter to the next. Janina Dushiko, a 60-year-old lady, recounts the events. Janina's beliefs may be viewed as quirky, but her love for all life raises some difficult concerns about human supremacy and the right to exploit other species. Many people find Janina Dushiko to be peculiar for a variety of reasons. She is an ardent vegetarian, an atheist, an astrology scholar, and a former English schoolteacher who enjoys reading William Blake's poetry. She works alongside her old pupil and friend, Dizzy, to translate the English poet's works into Polish. Up until around two years ago, Janina's life was quite secluded, although she did share it with two dogs, which she referred to as her little girls, but the pair have since vanished. Oddball, one of Janina's neighbors, goes to her house in the middle of the night during the winter to inform her that Bigfoot, another neighbor, has been found dead in his house. They examine the site and prepare to bury Bigfoot's remains. They determine that he died as a result of suffocating on a bone when he was eating illegally hunted deer meat. Janina discovers a frightening photograph while going through Bigfoot's belongings. However, she does not share the contents of the photograph with us. Janina is confident that the local wildlife carried out a vendetta against Bigfoot and murdered him. Furthermore, she believes that his astrological chart validates her idea. Janina has been placed under investigation by the police due to the fact that it is common knowledge that she has assaulted hunters in the past and that Bigfoot was not on good terms with her. Despite this, the police are unable to demonstrate any link between her and Bigfoot's passing. Shortly after this, Dizzy finds the body of the police commandant, who was also a hunter, inside his vehicle. Janina is now more certain than ever that the animals are plotting their vengeance, and she believes that this can be shown by examining the astrological chart of the commandant. Oddball and Dizzy are open to her ideas, but she is the only one who believes it. The investigation into the murder of the commandant leads the police to interview Janina as a potential witness to the crime. Due to the fact that she is often complaining about unlawful hunting and poaching, they have already formed the opinion that she is a lunatic. Janina is reprimanded by an officer for giving the impression that she cares more for animals than her fellow people. Janina's response is that she places equal importance on each of them. Later on, Janina sends a barrage of letters to the authorities in which she demands that they analyze the astrological chart of the most recent murder victim as well, on the grounds that it would demonstrate that wildlife was responsible for the victim's death. Within a short period of time following the death of the commandant, a rich businessman called Inad vanishes. All of the foxes imprisoned on his fur farm have unexpectedly been liberated. The locals are under the impression that Inad fled the scene because he was paying the commandant a bribe to conceal the illicit operations he was engaged in and that he may have been involved in the murder. A newcomer comes in the community, an entomologist arrives not long after the event in question, called Boros, who is there to study a species of beetle that is at risk of extinction. He is concerned about the impact that a nearby logging project may have on the beetle habitat. Janina invites Boros to stay with her at her house, and he welcomes the invitation. 
A short-lived love relationship develops between the two before he moves on to another research venture. During this time, the dead corpse of Inad is found in the woods, entangled in an animal trap. This most recent homicide is followed by another in the summer when the president of the neighborhood Mushroom Pickers Club is discovered dead and coated with beetles. Everyone in the community has developed a paranoid fear that they are being followed by a murderer. Things calm down until early November when a new church dedicated to the patron saint of hunters is consecrated. A sermon is given by the local priest, Father Russell, who is also an avid hunter. In the sermon, Father Russell celebrates hunters as the partners of God in the process of creation. Janina is in attendance during the ceremony, and she opposes the things that Father Russell is saying. She criticizes both Father Russell and the parishioners harshly for their hypocrisy and lack of compassion. The chapel catches fire by the next evening, taking Father Russell's life in the process. Dizzy and Oddball approach Janina and accuse her of killing the five men. She confesses to murdering the commandant, Inard, the president, and Father Russell but she claims that Bigfoot passed out from choking on his food. The unsettling photograph that she saw at his house showed a bunch of hunters posing next to a pile of dead animals that included her two pets. Janina made the decision to get vengeance for both her young girls and all of the animals that had been killed in an unethical way by hunters. The next day, Janina is taken into custody by law enforcement officers who come to her home. However, by the time they do, she has already crossed into the Czech Republic. Boros takes her to an entomological research station in a national park so she may work on her astrological charts in solitude. The story has an untrustworthy narrator. It isn't until practically the very end of the book that the main character and narrator, Janina, admits that she was the one who carried out the killings she describes. By empathizing with the character's strong care for animal welfare, the reader is prompted to connect with her. Her portrayal is an eccentric old woman, which other characters sometimes view with suspicion or even scorn only serves to increase the affection one feels for her. Therefore, her confession comes as a shock and delivers a powerful finale. If you have any suggestions of which books I should summarize, please let me know in the comments, and if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe.